This is a 110 scale racing car. It can go up to speeds of 40 miles per hour, and for the past four months, I've been trying to make it autonomous while racing as fast as it possibly can. The only problem is, I don't know what I'm doing. To get a car to drive itself, you first need to give it some sort of map to plan a trajectory on. This is a map of our building. This is where our lab is, and this will be the track that we plan to have the car race on. However, this is not a map the robot will understand. So we need to do something called SLAM, which stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. Essentially, it's a way for a robot to figure out where it is and what's around it simultaneously in real time. Now, this car just happens to have a LiDAR. So we can use this LiDAR to perform SLAM. A LiDAR sensor works by sweeping a laser across to measure distances to nearest obstacles. This information is then used as our initial map. Now this map is incomplete, so we need to drive around to collect more scan measurements. Each time we try to match the new sensor measurements with the map that we already have and update it into a more and more refined map. Now this sounds all good in theory, until you run the actual algorithm. And uh, yeah. What the hell is this? Now from this point onwards, I spent over a month trying to figure out why the hell the slam wasn't working? I tried everything. I ran so many tests, I redid the PID tuning, but just nothing seemed to work. Now, why turn? Yo, yo, it works! In the end, it turns out it was just because I added an extra negative sign for the velocity. So then the car was thinking it was going backwards when it was actually going forwards. And that just broke the entire slam algorithm. But anyways, I finally figured it out. And now we have an accurate map generated. <laughs> now that we have a map, we need to figure out a way to tell this car which directory to follow. And since we want this car to race as fast as it possibly can, we should generate an optimal race line, which is usually generated using a technique called optimal control. But since that would take way too long to explain, and not because I don't know what I'm doing, I just generated a racing line in simulation by driving the car around and recording its ground truth position. Also, let me just say, bathrooms are like the best place to make YouTube videos. Now, a continuous line is difficult to represent in code. So what we usually do is discretize this line, which is just a fancy way of saying we cut this line up into points. Then we use a simple look ahead algorithm for our controller. The car considers the set of points in a certain radius, say two meters, and pick the farthest point in the direction that it is going. It will then orient its wheels to go into the direction of that point and hopefully the car will be able to localize itself so that it follows the right waypoints. So not talking, let's get the car running and do this. So Em, do you believe that our algorithm is going to work? Ha! Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Okay. So the car is moving, but it's moving very slowly, and you can notice that it's wiggling a lot. So if I were to drive this car faster, it would just straight up crash. And so why is it wiggling so much? Well, my analysis of this is that the controller I've implemented is either wrong or it's badly tuned because it seems to be overcorrecting for the waypoints in front of it, which causes it to steer a lot more than it should. Now, I still wanted to give you guys a taste of how fast this car could actually go, so I decided to drive it manually. Steven, please. Yeah, I'm never doing that again for you guys. Oh. Alright, since that clip, it's been like three weeks, I got sick three different times. But man, uh, victory is just so close. All we need to do is tune this car properly so it can race as fast as possible. Now on that last run, I drove it manually and I ran into a wall. So one of the antennas broke off and uh, I printed a new one, 
this one can also mount a GoPro on it so we can have a better view of the car driving around. So the plan is let's go out there again, tune this car properly and, and hopefully we can get this car racing autonomously super duper fast and it's gonna look so freaking cool. By the way, if you're wondering how I got my hands on one of these, well it's actually not mine. Um, I've been doing research under a professor for the past four months for autonomous racing and we're using this car as a playground to test algorithms. And meanwhile you got me who can't even get this car to drive straight. Absolutely pathetic. But you know what? At least I don't give up. So after hours and hours of rewriting the controller, regenerating the waypoints, and retuning the controller, we finally have a car that can drive fast enough to crash into a freaking wall. But I never gave up. I kept trying and trying until Oh my god, it works, baby! Let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Oh my god, this is sick! Alright, so we did it. I hope that was satisfying to watch as much as it was satisfying for me to film it. Now I'm working on a project where it's head-to-head -head racing. So in this video what you saw was a single car trying to race as fast as possible. But what happens when you have multiple cars trying to race each other? Just like in F1 how there's qualifying and the actual race. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed. It's going to be coming out hopefully soon. But until then, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you later.